Honey, how's your food? It's really good. I'm <laughs> totally psyched that we're getting to sit here, have a fabulous meal here at the Rosewater Supper Club in Toronto, and talk about this tremendous success story known as Melinda Shankar at the young age of 19, you've accomplished so much in your acting career. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's true, right? I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed that here you are, South Asian young woman in this really, really competitive industry, and you've got two globally syndicated mainstream TV shows, Degrassi, and of course, Hello, Andy. Absolutely. <laughs> My little baby. <laughs> oh, so let's let's talk about that. Yeah. What, um, tell me about Degrassi. How did that come about for you? Well, I mean, coming from Ottawa, it was, you know, a year at least, if not, of my dad driving every single week, once or twice to Toronto, which is five hours each way for the like the five minute audition. Wow. And so, yeah, he's amazing. You know, dropped everything he had to do, and we own a martial arts school there. So he would just get another teacher and be on his way. And so eventually, Degrassi was my first TV show audition, and I went to Toronto. You know, had no acting experience really. Um, and you know booked it and then through you know overnight I was in Toronto I was you know my school I was you know away from my family away from my school my karate school my dance school it was just an overnight and now I'm in Toronto I'm in the public eye people are looking at what I'm doing and it's just different you know so I mean how does a girl from Ottawa just move to Toronto I mean I mean there's, there's a certain level of um, courage associated with that decision I think it was one of those things where my parents had always let us be our own person with the support. They were never guiding us and making us do things. They would always give us um, the route that they wanted us to go and let us kind of do it. So I think we were always independent and doing our own things. I mean, dance competitions, karate competitions across the country, um, and you know, even into other countries, we'd just kind of go with other people and, and learn to live life on our own. So it wasn't a huge shock for me. It wasn't. So Degrassi was your first um, audition and you got the role um, and you mentioned that the the crew there really look for people who are um, you know really serious about acting and really serious about their roles yeah. okay so am I to assume that your role potentially was initially um, a very small role and then it kind of developed into something bigger um, it was Degrassi was my first TV role, and I was doing a lot of modeling and that kind of stuff before, and in LA and back and forth, that kind of thing. Um, so I was used to being with people, and you know what I mean, around crews and sets, and um, but still modeling and and you know fashion and mm -hmm. TV is way different. Absolutely. But um, my character was supposed to be a lead. I mean, the year that I got on, they revamped the show, kind of some of the old. Um, characters such as Drake now, they kind of, they graduated so they needed some new class members and um, you know there were seven of us that were introduced and um, I was lucky, lucky enough that the character was supposed to be um, a pretty dominant character but I think with um, especially having a sibling and then they brought in um, parents which there's 20 lead cast but not everyone's fortunate enough to have parents on the show and to right. have a family and to go into the Bandari household and have scenes and episodes based in our home, especially when it's a show about a school and all the kids in general. So I think between the um, Raya Black, who plays my brother on the show, and I, we've kind of made the show, you know, not our, our own, but we've, we've definitely done something great with it. And they go into our household quite a bit, I'd say. Mm -hmm. So... Degrassi isn't the only thing that you're working on right now. No. You've also got this fabulous um, other great thing that you're doing. Tell me a little bit about that. How to be indie. Yes. Um, I love it. I love it so much. I play 14 on it. Um, and this is something about me. I don't know if you know. I can't walk in flat shoes. I can run a marathon in heels, but I can't <laughs> walk in flats. I trip. And so on the show, because I'm 14, I'm always in flat. So I think that helps me you know, with my posture being all schlumpy and, and walking like a duck, that's how I pass the forge, and I'm short, I'm five feet tall. <laughs> uh, so I think that um, it's, that helps me pass this 14. Right. And it's comedy, that's my favorite type of acting. I feel like it's, it's closer to me, you know, in person, like I'm always laughing and I'm comedic and big. And I feel like when I do Degrassi, I almost have to tone myself down to be normal, you right. know what I mean? So. Right. Um, and I just have so much fun. The writers are a genius. Just in the read-throughs, we can't. We have laugh attacks all the time, <laughs> and we have the, what we call the five o'clock hit. When it's five o'clock, no matter if we don't know the time, we just start laughing uncontrollably. 
and it just you know after 13 hours you go crazy and 20 pages um, it's it's a lot of work but if I didn't love what I do there's no way I'd be anywhere near this business yeah. it's way too crazy but um, I think that as long as I keep laughing and I keep having my five o'clock hit I know that I'm still loving it and that's what the producer say I you know I'm like I'm so sorry for the laughing and the 20 minute break and they're like no we know that if you were to stop laughing and you'd then you wouldn't be happy what you're doing and you'd be miserable and so you know, if they're embracing it, then it's all about, you know, Absolutely. being happy and healthy and, yeah. Absolutely. And that's part and parcel of what gets you through, right? Oh, I mean, can you imagine, you know, waking up at 5.30, you know, and going to bed at 12, you know, after you memorize 20 pages, yeah. filming it, and then, um, you know, having people touch you all the time and just, you know, scene after scene without being happy or having fun and mm -hmm. just doing it every single day I mean it would take a toll on you so yeah us you know laughing therapy is way better than you know going some other routes of people <laughs> Absolutely. you know you're right about that I mean you look at um, young Hollywood right now and there's so many challenges I mean when you have that much power you have so much access to so many things that um, you know you're not really ready to understand yeah. Right? And I mean, you're headed that way now in terms of what else is there you can do really in Canada that's bigger than what you're doing. Right. I mean, Hollywood would be your next big stepping stone. So you're going to be faced with these similar challenges, right? right? And coming into your own as a young adult, having access to absolutely everything, um, and just the pressure of work and needing to, you know, be on top of your game. It's really difficult to be able to live that life. Yeah. You're headed there. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, you look at Lindsay Lohan, you look at all these people that, you know, we look at them and we laugh and we say, you know, look at what's going on in their lives and all the rest of it. But at the end of the day, when you think about all of what they're faced with right. and just the scrutiny on their lives, it's almost, you can almost, you know, know why they're going through this whole need for escapism or just to have some some way of getting away from it all right absolutely. right so how do i as, avoid it <laughs> i mean it's gonna happen right yeah. you're gonna be faced with this stuff of course and i and i already feel them you know being in toronto and just think about it i was 16 moving from ottawa where i'm you know family oriented in toronto on my own you know with friends and these events that we go to and we we do have access to many things but i think it's how comfortable you are with yourself and you know how smart you are and how level-headed because I mean you do have all this power but you can choose two ways to go about it you can turn it into something negative or you can take all the power and all your resources and make it into a positive thing mm -hmm. and so I think that's the way I'm going about it <laughs> and it seems to be working I don't know I'm having a good time without getting into craziness and I know that wherever I'm going and wherever I'm headed it's all you know because I'm, I've worked hard for it and it's not I'm not ashamed of anything I've done and you know, I'm proud of myself. Mm -hmm. And so you should be, and it's probably a real testament to, you know, the kind of background that you come from. I mean, you, coming from a South Asian background, obviously you're very family oriented. I mean, yeah, you chatted yeah. with me earlier on about how your uh, family is just such an integral c component of very who amazing. you are today. Oh, absolutely. Right? So, um, do you think perhaps coming from a strong cultural background kind of helps you stay grounded and, and to be able to you know, deal with these kinds of challenges a lot better because you've got grounding of some sort. And, and you know how our parents are in our culture, right? Of course. Right? <laughs> I think more so than anything else, I'm just, I know how much my parents love me and I know that whenever I do something good, how happy they are and how proud they are. And I don't know why I'd ever want to take them the other route just because I have so much respect for them and for myself that, I mean, when they came to your Inoki Gala, my dad was crying, like he had Aww. tears, like he was just, they're just so happy and they've just been, I mean they drove five hours for your event and they were talking about it for days and still talking <laughs> about it, let me tell you. They oh, were, that's lovely. They were impressed and beyond anything they've, I've ever taken them to, so, mm. and you know, they were just happy and I don't know why I'd ever want to make them not happy or proud of me, so I think that, you know, with all the resources that I'm given, it doesn't even, it goes in and out and yeah. I just, you know, stay clear from all that kind of nonsense. So your challenge, so the massive challenge in your life and you've got to figure out a way to overcome it. Where do you go in your headspace? You know, you go and you do some boxing classes. I'm a dancer and I dance, you go to the gym, shop it out, which is my yes. favorite thing. 
go to therapy. spa day. I mean, there's so many, you know, a night out with the girls. Mm. There's so many just healthy, positive ways that, and then you just don't feel bad about it or, you know, yeah. unless my dad gets the credit card bills and then he's like, <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? So girl, you're making all this money yeah. <laughs> and your father's still checking your credit card? I, I mean, love that. just the other day he called me and he said, how many laptops are you buying? And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> He's like, you know, so much money for Mac. And I was like, oh, Mac makeup. Oh, gosh. <laughs> he didn't get it. He was like, iPods, why do you need two, three? And I was like, it's makeup, daddy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's, he's still, that's the thing. He keeps us level-headed. He yes. just, he's, he's one of those, you know, I'm, I am making it. Yeah, but he's just, he's just a real guy and a, I'm come from a real family. And yeah. They just want to keep me that way. And my sister that I live with, she does not take anything. If ever there was the slightest, you know, balloon head, she would just smack it down. Like there's just, <laughs> there's no way that I could possibly get an ego because it would just be shut down. So just stay clear. <laughs> so what kind of guy does Melinda Schenker date? Well, um, I, just because I'm such a like energetic personality mm. and I'm always laughing and making jokes. I mean, my guy would definitely have to be um, a comedic guy, obviously really good looking. <laughs> obviously. Obviously, that's on the criteria. Yeah. Um, and again, someone who gets along with my family, because I personally think that if, if you know he didn't get along with my family, then I don't know that I could you know be happy myself. And my boyfriend is on Degrassi right now, and my mom loves him, and my dad loves him, and my little brother loves him, which is one of those like thank wow. God. Yes. And and vice versa, and it's it's just such a great feeling and. He's, he gets it, he's in the acting field, he's, mm. you know, with our crazy hours, if I don't see him for like a week at a time, it's, it's not the end of the world, you know what I mean? Mm. He just, he knows and he's supportive and just someone who understands that it's not, uh, it's not an easy job and if I'm, you know what I mean, a little bit stressed out, it's... He gets it. He gets it, yeah. And it's so rare, it's yeah. so rare to find. Yeah. But you know, it's really interesting because we read so much about, um, you know, people in relationships from this industry, okay? Actors with directors and actors with actors and, mm -hmm. and all the rest of it. And it's so difficult to stay connected and to stay honest right. and to stay in a positive space with each other, right? You're really young. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. So, I mean, of course, you're in a different um, space altogether, but these are real challenges, right? Yeah, it's one Do, of those. Are things. you challenged ever? I mean, does that ever happen with you and your boyfriend? It's we're just supportive of each other and we're always, you know, there at events and helping each other out. And um, luckily on the same show, so when there's events, we're there together and promoting ourselves and each other. Um, and I'm one of those people that I I live by everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. And so if if it's meant to be, it'll happen. And if it's not, it's not. But so far, so good. And as long as we're just living day by day and happy and um, being supportive of each other. I mean, he's gone to LA for weeks at a time and just it, it is what it is you know and I've been away to New York and it just as young as you are you have this incredible old soul I hear that uh, a lot. perspective <laughs> yeah. like this old soul perspective on life I mean what will be will be I mean we hear these things and they're such cliches in life right but so how many cliche. people how many people actually really get what that means and and live their lives according to that yeah and where did that come from from this young 19 year old I don't know just you know keep healthy and open-minded so where where is it that you're hoping to get to LA my first job ever was in LA and I just from there just set the bar so high mm -hmm. that I was like this is where I need to be in terms of fashion in the way people live their life it just seems really comfortable like I was just there for kids choice awards and it was just a nice vibe like it was just glam and elegant and and obviously there is the, the nasty parts and of but anywhere is like that. It's mm -hmm. you know, again where you choose to be and where you choose to, you know, apply yourself and you can do anything with where you are really. And you've done a couple of features. Talk to me about that. Um, well one of them is the Disney remake of Harriet the Spy. Yes. And they played Jeannie Gibb, the best friend. Um, and that was fun. It was a quick nineteen day shoot. Mm -hmm. Um, the lead Jennifer Stone had to go back to filming Wizards of Waverly, which is um pretty big hit in Disney yeah. so it was just one of those in and outs and it was it was fun because I had to play the the science nerd the earthy girl and that's usually not where I go but it was nice to you know get the range of learning all these big scientific words that I'm <laughs> forget now but 
I mean, it was an experience, and it's, it's one of those things that you don't forget. Mm -hmm. And it's another great thing to add to your resume. And, Absolutely. And then the next one was the, I think, the biggest learning experience ever acting-wise. I did an indie film called The Festival of Light, and it's not even out yet, but um, we filmed most of that in Queens, New York, and mm -hmm. some of that in South America, in Guyana. Actresses from the Disney family, right? I mean, Selena Gomez, for example, um, who you're very, you know, comparative to. Oh. I mean, you know, come from a very strong cultural background, female, um, successful syndicated TV show and everything. But once you get into that whole Disney whirlwind, right, you just be, almost become indicative to that product. You've been fortunate that even though you've got these two fabulous shows that you're on, and they're also very well recognized, that you're able to expand your repertoire into something like this movie that you did with um, Aidan Quinn, right? Yeah. It's, it's one of those things where I'm very blessed not to be branded or typecasted as anything. Yeah. And if I've only done, say, five major jobs, and they've all been at polar opposites. They have not been the same character, which for me is important, because I would hate to be, you know, typecasted as any one character, because, you know, I mean, that can only last for so long once you get out of this, your look, your age range, your, you know what I mean? So, um, I was definitely very blessed in that area. And, you know, I think you're blessed regardless, because, I mean, <laughs> all, all the years that I've been um, interviewing uh, many actresses and, and actors from the South Asian community, well, the single biggest challenge that they've always had is just being narrow casted into roles. As the Indian kid? Yeah, on some level. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Just the stereotypical caricature type of roles. But you've never been faced with that. No, I really, mean, have on you? Harriet the Spy, the, the character was open race. Mm -hmm. and, and for that, I mean, I go into that thinking, Lord, <laughs> there's going to be every race there, are many, you know, girls, and it's, it's going to be hard. And, you know, for whatever reason, they picked me. And it wasn't specifically because I was South Asian, you know what I mean? There was multi, you know, race and cultural in that show and in that movie and it was, it's nice that they just, you know, colorblind.